in a distant age, millions of years ago, when the glaciers first lengthened, five stood. They chose the path of perpetual memory, and in their ravenous hunger, rolled gigantic sizes, and with bubbling stomachs, they scoured the Australian landscapes seeking the fruits and nuts to satisfy their hunger. And those that tasted a bite of their beaks called them the Doom Ducks. The dune ducks, also known as Dromo ornithids, aka Myrungs, aka Thunderbirds, aka Demon Ducks of Doom, were a clade of large, flightless birds that resided in Australia for several millions of years, with some members living up to as recently as 15,000 years ago, growing to gigantic sizes throughout this span of time. However, these nicknames stem not only from their size, but their fascinating relation. While they may not look it, dromo ornithids are related to some of the most familiar birds we know and love today. Birds that, while lacking in stature, make up for it with sheer moxie, beauty, and absolute ferociousness. Waterfowl. That's right, it's thought dromo ornithids are distantly related to ducks, geese, and swans. Unlike their semi-aquatic cousins, most of them anyway, Demon ducks were true giants, growing to be amongst the largest birds of all time. These demon ducks of doom earned such a name for good reason, for their terrifying appearances and tremendous stature, like Bullicornis, a giant from the Miocene that stood approximately 8 feet 2.5 meters, and weighing in at 250 kilograms, or 550 pounds. Bullicornis itself has its own identity issues. Due to its closeness to the Dromoornis, many scientists have lumped the two together on several occasions, although the status of the two being a separate genus is still up in the air at the moment. Dromoornis itself stands as the largest bird to ever roam Australia, weighing only slightly more than Bullicornis, and ranks as possibly the largest bird to ever exist next to the elephant birds of Australia, weighing an estimated half a ton. These birds were not only unique in size, but in appearances as well, with some of them having massive crunching beaks, while others were relatively on the bland side. So the question is, what were they doing with them? For a long time it was heavily debated on what these birds ate and how they behaved. However, recent evidence has finally painted a clearer picture of these fascinating ducks of doom. Despite their large, seemingly bone-crunching beaks, the Doom Ducks were in fact herbivorous animals, lacking any sort of features necessary for a predatory lifestyle amongst birds, such as talons or hooked tips at the end of their beaks. But, make no mistake, these powerful beaks would have delivered a nasty little peck if these birds felt irritated or threatened. Each of these birds had their own different beaks that were specialized for different food items with Dromoornis and Bullicornis feeding on fruits and nuts with their large crushing beaks, while others like Geniornis, which had less specialized beaks, fed on a wider range of food items such as grasses and leaves. Some have suggested that Bullicornis might have been a carnivorous animal, using its massive beak to rip and tear through flesh and crush bone. Although, due to the lack of evidence to support this notion, it remains highly unlikely and very speculative. We can also determine the diets of these birds based on molecular analysis of the gastrolus that once occupied these animals' stomachs, with tests of Elbenornis and Geniornis confirming a primarily herbivorous diet in these birds, although these dietary choices could have varied amongst their relatives, with some possibly being omnivores, feeding on small animals like lizards from time to time. The specializations of these birds also indicate what types of environments these birds were living in, along with the locations of the fossil deposits these animals were discovered in, with the Bullicornis and Dromoornis favoring rainforest ecosystems, while Geniornis preferred open environments. 
Another fascinating adaptation these birds had were their hoof-like feet. Unlike other groups of birds, the dune ducks sported hoof-like toes in their feet rather than claws or talons like other birds, an adaptation that likely spawned from a ground-dwelling lifestyle as well as the necessity to support their massive weight when walking or running. What's more interesting is that these birds do not possess the slender legs of other birds like ostriches or emus, but had thick, robust legs. However, this adaptation by no means inhibited them, with studies on Jenny Ornis showing that these birds made up for their lumbering bodies with power in their legs that allowed them to run faster than previously believed. The morphology of these birds also tell us that Droma ornithids were sexually dimorphic, which means males and females exhibit traits that make them appear different. A discovery published in 2016 revealed that Dromo Ornis Tertoni was actually sexually dimorphic, with males being significantly larger and more robust than females, with females being more slender and possessing medullary tissue. Not only that, but the presence of both skeletons in such a close proximity on the same layer of strata indicates that these birds were possibly exhibiting social behaviors, a special social behavior in particular that's found in their modern relatives like geese, monogamy. Monogamy is when a pair of animals breed with one and only one partner at a time, and in this case, the two Droma Ornis discovered together seem to have been a mated pair. These birds came in wide varieties across Australia, from the beak crunching Bullocornis to the elegant Elbin Ornis. Jenny Ornis is the best known of the Doom Ducks, being the latest and last of this long line of bizarre behemoth birds. Jenny Ornis lived during the late Pleistocene approximately 40,000 years ago, alongside other bizarre animals such as the gigantic marsupial Diprotodon and the largest lizard ever to exist, Megalania. Jenny Ornis also coexisted with early aborigines, with various aboriginal paintings and carvings depicting these birds going about their lives. It was once thought that the aboriginal people would cook Jenny Ornis eggs based on giant burned eggshells found at various archaeological sites. However, recent tests reveal that these eggs didn't belong to Jenny Ornis, but another bird called the giant mallyfowl, who wasn't even closely related. Nevertheless, this was a fascinating bird all on its own. Jenny Ornis preferred vast open habitat like grassland, with evidence suggesting that these birds would also flock in large groups similar to ostriches. Jenny Ornis themselves shared many characteristics with ostriches despite not being related, such as a long slender neck with a small head sitting atop, a large body that made them unable to fly, and long powerful legs that made them master speedsters, being able to run vast distances. These traits appear to be convergently evolved with ostriches, with the two not sharing close relation outside of being birds, evolving similar traits to suit similar environmental conditions, i.e. grassland environments. Furthermore, biomechanical tests show that Jenny Ornis, despite its large bulk, could still use its muscular legs to run vast distances at great speeds, as well as deliver a nasty kick to rivals and predators. However, their great power and tremendous speed did not allow these birds to outrun extinction. Like many megafauna at the end of the last ice age approximately 15 to 10,000 years ago, Jenny Ornis met its end, with many speculating it might have been due to a combination of human hunting and climate change. And with Jenny Ornis's demise would come the demise of the last of the doom ducks. While the doom ducks may be gone, the remains of these birds from their bones to their eggs to aboriginal paintings keep their memory unbroken within prehistory while their legacy continues to remain eternal.